Hello, welcome to Movie Summaries. Today we are summarizing a 2021 mysterious horror movie called No One Gets Out Alive. Fair warning, there are spoilers in this summary. Enjoy, and be sure to subscribe to watch more videos weekly and hit like. The movie begins with footage from 1963 in Mexico. The video was made by an archaeologist named Arthur Wells. In the video, Arthur is seen inspecting a structure hidden deep in the forest. The structure contains strange symbols and heaps of chained human skeletons, indicating they must have been sacrificed. From deep underground, a mysterious box is retrieved. The movie then fast forwards to the present day. A woman is seen talking on the phone with her brother in a boarding house in Cleveland. She seems to be talking to her family back in Mexico, as she tells her brother on the phone that she has been having bad dreams. Her door handle seemingly unlocks itself. She expresses that she has the strong urge to leave the apartment. I mean, I would too. This house seems haunted. She notices footsteps appear and disappear on the floor. Suddenly, the power goes out. She then hears a loud rumbling noise from the other and goes to inspect. Of course, the victim gets curious. She notices a strange stone box in the other room but doesn't realize some ghostly figure standing right behind her. The box suddenly starts moving towards, freaking her out. The ghostly figure then immediately grabs her from behind. The movie then cuts to the back of a truck carrying dozens of illegal Mexican immigrants. The human trafficker drops the immigrants in Cleveland, Ohio. One of the immigrants is a woman named Amber Cruz. Amber manages to find work in an illegal sweatshop. She stays at a cheap motel for two weeks, but the motel owner keeps pestering her for an ID. Fed up, she starts looking for a new place to live. She comes across a flyer for a cheap women-only boarding house. She immediately packs her bags and moves in without much deliberation. The house is owned by a man named Red Wells. Red reveals that currently there are only two women, including Amber, living in the complex. Realizing that Amber is an illegal immigrant, Red asks her to pay her one month rent up front. Amber pays him from a reserve of cash she seems to have saved up. Before leaving, Red lets her know that if she needs anything, he lives on the top floor of the complex. Later, Amber hears a noise of someone crying through an air vent. When she investigates, she finds Freya, the woman who lives in the apartment below her, crying. She brushes it aside and returns to her bed and looks at the pictures of her late mother. She finds herself reliving her last moments with her. It is revealed that Amber's mother was hospitalized for a long time before she died. She remembers her mother caressing her hair from her hospital bed and asking her to stay longer with her. The next day, while leaving for work, she runs into Freya. Amber introduces herself and tells her that Red told her about her. However, Freya exclaims that Red is full of shit before leaving. Two ghostly women are shown to be listening to their conversation from upstairs. At work, Amber's boss doesn't seem happy with her performance. She apologizes and assure him that she will do better. Amber has befriended a co-worker named Kinsey. Kinsey is working to help Amber get an ID. Kinsey tells her that her contract has hiked the price up for the Texas ID to $3,000. Amber, of course, doesn't have three grand lying around, so Kinsey asks her why doesn't Amber get an Ohio-based ID, but Amber insists that she needs her ID to be from Texas. After work, Amber takes a taxi to meet her distant uncle, Beto, and his family, who live in the suburbs for dinner. Using his contact, Beto has found a good job for Amber. He asks her to bring her ID card to her job interview next Friday. Seeing the freezing cold outside, he even asks his wife to give her a coat. During their conversation, it is revealed that Amber couldn't go to college because of her sick mother. Amber put her life on pause to take care of her ailing mother. Amber reveals that she is planning to go to night school for business management. After returning from Beto's place, Amber hears noises coming from the basement. When she goes to inspect, she comes across scratch marks seemingly made by someone's nails. As she investigates further, Red appears and tells her that the basement is private. Amber apologizes and asks Red if she can have her deposit back. She tells him that she needs it for something urgent, but he tells her that he has already spent her money on refurbishments. Back in her apartment, she again hears the sound of Freya crying through the air vent. This time, Amber decides to check up on her and goes to Freya's room. However, she finds Freya's door open with no one inside. Amber returns to her room and again gets lost in the thoughts of her mother. She relives her mother telling her that she has beautiful hair. Amber's mom also asks her if she's okay with taking care of her instead of going to college. Amber replies that it is her honor to take care of her mother. Suddenly, the mom notices the stone box in the corner of the room. It is the same box that we saw earlier in the movie. A hand appears from inside the box and proceeds to come out. Amber wakes up in a cold sweat, realizing it was just a terrible nightmare. Or it wasn't. The next day, at work, Amber asks her boss for an advanced salary, but he refuses. He scolds her for a poor performance and tells her that she is lucky that she even has a job. After work, she hangs out with Kinsey. Kinsey asks her why she is so adamant on having an ID from Texas. That too, by Friday. Amber reveals that she lied to her uncle, that she is a Texas-born U.S. citizen, because he had found a good-paying job, but that required an American ID. 
She expresses frustration how her life didn't go as she planned, since he empathizes with her struggle and offers to cover the rest of the fees as a loan. Amber is relieved and gives Kinsey the 1,000 grand she has saved for the ID. Amber profusely thanks her and promises to pay her back as soon as possible. As she's walking towards her building, further in the distance behind her, a creepy woman appears for a few seconds, and Amber doesn't notice. After returning home, she notices a bald man repeatedly banging his head on the basement door. She is a little freaked out, but decides to ignore him. Back at her room, Amber hears someone reading some devious chant and banging on it once before leaving. Later, she comes across two Romanian women in the building. They are Maria and Petra. As they acquaint themselves with each other, Red arrives and escorts the ladies away. Amber asks Red about the bald man, who Red reveals to be his sick brother, Becker. After Red leaves, Amber sneaks into Red's father's study room. She comes across pictures of Red and Becker and their parents, Arthur and Mary Wells. However, the face of Arthur has been crossed. The room also has a vintage tape recorder. In the tape, she listens to a man talking about a ritual where the elderly, women, and children children must be sacrificed in exchange for blessings. The room also has dark magic books, which depict people being beheaded and sacrificed. She also notices pictures of Arthur and Mary with the stone box she has been seeing in her nightmares. Shit is getting creepy. The following day, Amber tries to call Kinsey multiple times, but her phone goes straight to voicemail every single time. Amber learns that Kinsey has quit her job after taking her money. Oof, can't trust anyone too soon. Amber asks her boss for Kinsey's address, but when he refuses citing company policy, she raises her voice in frustration. He fires her from her job. Amber returns home and takes a shower, but strange things continue to happen to her. She hears the sound of muffled screams coming from the drain, but when she turns off the shower head, the sound stops, and Amber notices Freya walking towards her like a zombie. But when she removes the shower curtains, Freya disappears. Freaked out, Amber gets dressed up and rushes out of the bathroom and bumps into Red. When he inquires why she looks so scared, she tells him about Freya, but Red tells her that Freya has already moved out. He also tells her that the new tenants have moved into the complex, so he can give her the deposit back if she needs it. Amber returns to her room. Still shaken by what she witnesses in the washroom, she listens to her mother's old voicemail to comfort herself. She then notices a moth and smacks it with her hand, then notices another one, which leads her to the spirit of Mary. She freaks out, and the spirit disappears. Amber then notices that her door has been opened, and when she nervously investigates, an invisible spirit of a woman in distress runs into her room. The spirit of Mary follows the woman into the room and violently drags her outside. The woman pleads with Mary to let her go, but Mary tells her that she needs to prepare her, or Arthur will hurt them both. Amber follows the two spirits downstairs. The woman begs outside the basement to let her go, but a hand appears from the basement and drags her inside. Amber freaks out and decides to leave the complex for good. She calls Beto for help, but he tells her that he is out of town with his family. He asks her to call the police, but she comes clean about her situation with the law. He tells her to stay out of trouble, and he will come to pick her up as soon as he can. Amber then goes into Red's room and asks for her deposit back, but Beck answers the door. He reveals that Red isn't home and tells her to come back later. Amber decides not to stay any longer in the complex and leaves. However, even outside the home, she continues to see the stone box. She notices the spirit of her mother in the subway and a creature creeping out of the box. She suddenly snaps out of her dream and realizes she is in a cafe and calls Red to meet her. He tells her that he doesn't have the money with him at the moment, but if she wants the money back, she has to come to the complex with her. She tells him that she doesn't want to go back to that place. Red then reveals that Becker was acting strange because he is sick. Becker took care of Red as their father was a piece of shit, basically. Red feels that now, it is his turn to look after Becker. Amber eventually agrees to go back to the complex to get her money. Bad decision. Red tells her that he has kept her money in the room. However, she doesn't find her money anywhere in the room. Red then starts confessing that his dad Arthur liked to collect strange things and found the stone box in Mexico. He was a nut job and killed Red's mom. Amber starts freaking out and tries to leave, but Red blocks her attempts. He then tells her that if she hadn't left, he was going to give her money back and she could have left. But now that Becker has seen her, Red says that his brother needs her. Just then, Becker appears and forces Amber to drink alcohol. She tries to resist, but he forces it down her throat. Before locking her in the room, Red tries to warn her not to leave, as Becker will make it even worse. After a while, Petra and Maria ask Amber to let them in. They too are running from Becker and reveal that he is guarding the exit. They too recall seeing the stone box in their dream. With no escape in sight, Petra and Maria start singing to comfort themselves, while Amber sits dreaming and seeing the spirit of Mary calling her. But she quickly snaps out of her dream and finds Maria and Petra screaming for help. Red and Becker are trying to take them downstairs. The girls fight back, 
but the two men easily subdue them. Suddenly, the doorbell rings. Becker sends Red to answer the door. It is Beto at the door, looking for Amber. Red tries to send Beto away, but Beto notices Amber's coat by the door. Amber then breaks the window and alerts Beto. Beto pushes Red down and runs upstairs to help her. Oh boy. Beto reaches Amber's door. This is not going to go well for Beto. Becker appears and beats him to death as Amber frantically pleads with Becker to stop. Amber is then locked in a room with Maria and Petra. Later, Becker takes Maria away and asks Red to prepare Amber. Amber asks him why he is even doing this for his maniac brother. Red responds that Becker does doesn't do these rituals for fun. These rituals heal Becker's illness. He reveals that the two brothers moved back with their parents after they couldn't afford Becker's medical bills. After returning home, they saw what their father used to do to girls. Their mother Mary used to help them do it, but Arthur killed her too. Disgusted, the two brothers killed their father. Red wanted to leave the house, but Becker insisted on staying. But soon, just like their father, Becker started spending a lot of time with the box. Becker thinks that the box chose him and makes him feel better. Amber tries to convince Red to let her go, but he hands her over to Becker. Spirits of the other victims watch as Becker carries Amber into the basement. He removes the beheaded body of Maria and places Amber on the stone table. He then opens the mysterious box and leaves Amber alone with him. Suddenly, Strange noises start coming from the box. Amber again starts dreaming of her mother as a creature slowly emerges from the box and attempts to eat Amber's head. In her dream, Amber realizes something is up. Amber's mother tries to comfort her, but Amber tells her that she wants to leave. But when Amber's mother continues to insist, Amber strangles her mother to death and wakes up from her dream and finds the creature creeping back into the box. When she removes the lid, she finds a skeleton. Amber hears Becker and Red preparing Petra for the ritual. She grabs one of Arthur's ancient weapons from the study and hits Red with it multiple times. She then attacks Becker, but he throws her on the floor and breaks her ankle. He then proceeds to kill her with a weapon, but Petra intervenes. Angered, Becker grabs Petra and throws her down from the balcony, brutally killing her. He then starts choking Amber, but she slits his throat with a sharp object. She then grabs the ancient weapon and butchers him to death. Damn. She then hears Red shuffling around in the next room. She takes to the basement and offers him to the creature. She watches as the creature beheads Red. Amber then proceeds to leave with her broken ankle, but suddenly all her wounds heal, and she realizes that she got healed by sacrificing Red. Glad Amber was able to survive. Hope you enjoyed our summary. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos weekly. Thanks.